Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, your daily fix of football chat on STV. Uh, the main talking points, the SPFL announce a big shake-up in the League Cup and they also announce a new sponsor. Uh, we'll discuss that and Budge says that she wasn't aware of those plans until she read it in the media. And over the next three days, there's European football to look forward to in the Champions League and of course the Europa League with Celtic in Turkey to face Fenerbahce. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin, I'm delighted our guest is former Celtic Hibs, Borussia Dortmund and Dumbarton midfielder Murdo McLeod. I think I've got absolutely every one of them in there and let's not forget Scotland. And the great thing about having Murdo on, it uh, takes away any chance of you doing your gag about has anyone ever played against Brazil who's on the show because <laughs> <laughs> your, man, <laughs> your yeah. man has played against Brazil. Yeah, what you can remember. Yes, <laughs> well, <laughs> another good point but let's not talk about I never thought we're actually going to talk about Branco on this yeah. show with him but uh, let's concentrate on the big news because the SPFL um, I think deserve a bit of credit because they are battling away to try and get more money into the game and this new uh, deal will bring £8 million uh, to quite a lot of clubs um, who need that cash murder. Yeah, I think it's very important. It's good for a change as well. You know, I think a lot of the fans will turn up at the games, especially if the weather's really good at the start of the year and you're, you're looking at it and you're thinking if these teams are going to come out, it's going to be five games no home and away ties, it's just five five games and then all the winners have got a chance to go forward in the League Cup. Yep, uh, the format's fairly straightforward as far as uh, the early stages. You've got eight groups of five, you've got the winners and then the, the four best runners up. Um, and of course, th there won't be any replays, it's straight to mm -hmm. a penalty shootout, which I quite like that format as well. If I'm going to be slightly negative about one aspect of it um, that they've also revealed to everyone is there will be a, a winter break Two weeks is not a winter break for me, yeah. Mundo. No, I don't think so either. I'm a fan of the winter break. I usually get them and I really enjoy them. But uh, I think a fortnight, I don't think it helps anyone. I don't think the, f the football players will get, they maybe get three or four days rest. But it's like a, an international week. So it's not much longer than that. So and I think when you're a football player and you know, the, the, the lower clubs, the clubs in the lower leagues, they'll be looking at it, Peter, and they think they need an income that week, especially over Christmas and New Year. I think it's, it's very difficult. It's, you either go for a long winter shutdown, maybe four weeks, and I think that would be a good shutdown, but when you get, just a fortnight's not long enough. What's your take on it, Ruffy? Uh, I'm quite happy with it. Uh, obviously, fond memories of the League Cup, winning the League Cup will be back in 71. I like the format. Uh, it's a different format because mm -hmm. we had enough murder to remember it. It used to be Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, yeah. Wednesday, and then the final in October. Uh, I, I think it's good. I think it's summer football to a certain extent. I think some clubs will be a wee bit annoyed about who gets home advantage you know, if there's only yeah. four games, if it's no yeah. home and away. So I think it's something new. I think it's something we should grab a hold of because, I mean, I think we're always complaining about something. So let's just yeah. try it. Yeah, and there are 38 teams, Murdo, and, of course, the winners of the Highland and the Lowland League as well. Yeah, it's, it'll be interesting bringing other teams in it. But the only thing, again, we've been moaning for years about the Scottish teams going into European football. They've had no competitive games for the start of the tournament and here we've got a tournament on and they're not going to be playing in it so there are no competitive games for them either yeah uh, and i can understand why um well it, 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 do you have sympathy for Maybe with Mur with uh, Anne budge that she wasn't aware of these plans should it have been um put out there to all i thought it would have been peter i, I thought every club would have to be notified of if you're changing something, I would have thought they'd had to have some dialogue. And I find that I'm really surprised that she didn't know, or anybody at the club didn't know what was happening behind the scenes. Surely you have people on committees and have boards and discuss it. And to, to make a drastic change like that, I would, th I would have thought every club would have had to be notified. Yeah, I'm quite surprised at that as well. I wonder if uh, more chairmen uh, or owners will come out and mention the fact that they didn't. Maybe. Maybe probably didn't know the structure of it, yeah. um, rather than the fact that there, w that there was indeed um, you know, talks going on, uh, Murdo. Yeah. Peter, every football club should know if there's going to be a change at some sort. It doesn't matter how big, how small it is. Every football club's got to know. The owner's got to know. The chairman's got to know. And I, I'm surprised someone with the, the strength of hearts of Hart and Matholian 
if they don't know about it, then there's something wrong within the game. Yeah. Um, the other aspect of this as well, there's a two-week uh, shutdown, uh, Ruffy. Um, does it call into question any other possible changes that might have uh, arisen in the summer with a suggestion of a 16-team league? Yeah, I, th I think it's the start of it. I think if this is successful, uh, if we try it for a year and the clubs like it, I think it's another avenue for... Obviously not the big clubs because they're going to be playing in Europe, but it's it's a it's a way of of sort of a bridging the gap of the games that they're going to lose. You know, if they get an extended run in that League Cup, it could maybe just cover the finances of playing more games. But the bottom line is the big clubs are wanting to play each other four times. Yeah, do you buy into that, Murdo? I mean, we haven't had a chance to really get your thoughts on it. I, I, there's been a suggestion that maybe that would have been accelerated towards the summer, uh, a change of the structure in the league again. Yeah, obviously, it's small steps, isn't it? You know, make a change and see how it works. If people enjoy it, then make another change and then just keep on adding to it. Because obviously, just now, a lot of people are not happy with the way things are and the people playing each other four times. But financially, all the clubs need that just now. Yeah, would you like a 16 team league? I would. I would. And again, See if it doesn't work, you can change it back, Peter. Yeah, well, do you don't know what I mean? We're good at changing things. Well, we've been, well, Peter, <laughs> we've been moaning can... about things, then changing, and then moaning, you know. But I always think if, if you try something a wee bit different, it's always good for the game. It perks up the game for maybe that season. If it's if it's a success, then you go again. Keep it, keep it going while people are still enjoying it. But if you don't try anything, then it's, it's the same old, same old. Yeah, I, I mean, th there's a, a conference going on today at Hamden where um, some members of the Icelandic Football Federation have been uh, speaking to those and such as those, uh, Ruffy. I mean, do we really need to be looking at other countries consistently to try and look for the answers about what's wrong with our game? I mean, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's a think tank, which we mm -hmm. very... Uh, I'd be gobsmacked for anybody to say we embrace the majority of think tank one or think tank two. Do we really need Scandinavian countries to tell us where we're going wrong on this one? I think I don't think there's any... Uh matter and have some dialogue there might be something might just jump out of you but I would like to think the pairs that be uh, are doing their best you know I would like to think Iceland are doing that much more than what we're doing maybe they have better facilities obviously the climate's different up there maybe they, they've just went overboard and given more facilities than what we have but as far as the coaching side of it I would like to think that our coaches uh, behind the scenes are as good as the coaches that they've got. I think it's just a it's, it's a time and era thing where you have a, an influx of good players uh, and I think every country has it. Germany went on a wee slide there, Holland went on a slide and then you come back again, you get younger players coming through and then you grasp a hold of it and then you go again. I know we've been yeah. in the doldrums <laughs> for a wee while. <laughs> I know. Mark, Mark I know. Oh. Thinking, wow, how big Aye. is your slide? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I think that's just players coming through. I mean, we, we, we all we all said, oh, we're going to be good now. A lot of our players are playing down in England. I think there was a, a large spell there when they, they weren't in England. They weren't playing in the Premiership. I think there was it was all home-based players, and, and that's why we were struggling. But the structure looks as if it's definitely getting better. Yeah, who, who'd have thought a year ago you'd be asking Iceland for advice and how to bring on the young players? But now they were the first team to qualify for the Euro, Euros this year, so yeah. they're, they're doing something right. So as Alan touched on, it's not have a wee chat with them and see what they're doing. Yeah, uh, if anything, you know, it would be the structure rather than the fact that we're all aware, even asking you guys as former professionals, we're all aware that people need to work harder. Maybe questions need to be asked about how we coach uh, certain individuals to work more on their skills. Do we have enough people actually getting the chance to go out and play football? I mean... I don't think it takes a rocket scientist model yeah. to work out what's happened over the last 20, 30 years here. Well, if things are not working, what we spoke about earlier on, Peter, time for change. No, working players differently. No, every in individual player now, no, you've got to put your arm around them. In the olden days, you sometimes you'd kick them up the backside. Nowadays, it's the arm around them more often than not. But now the football players, the way they play the game. And I think the players now, the young kids, have got to know the game of football from an early age. And I think when you do that, when you're taught properly as a young kid now, then that helps you in the years coming up. Whereas I don't know whether just the young kids are not taught properly and they're not coming through. Because that, that, that's one thing we've never, in the years gone by, we've always had top players. It's come all the way through and they've played at the top in English football and they've, you know, they've made their mark in the, the game. 
but now we're looking about where's the next superstar who's Scottish. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, in the next part of the programme, we'll discuss one of Ruffy's old clubs, Paddock Thistle, debt free, um, and uh, get his thoughts on uh, the future for Thistle. We'll also look at the Europa League, uh, Celtic in Turkey to face Fenerbahce. Don't think there were too many fans uh, over there supporting the side, but you just never know. Uh, we'll also look at the Champions League as well because British representation, uh, English clubs involved, uh, will look at Manchester City and Manchester United. It's all coming up on the football show. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin, and our boot room guest is Murdo McLeod. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. Delighted to have your company every night of the week at half past six on STV. Uh, Alan Ruff and Murdo McLeod are with me and, uh, well, not too far away from surely Champions League football in the next couple of years. Ruffy, Partick Thistle, debt free now. Yeah, it's good. Uh, it's good that you get investors who are part of the club uh, and been supporters for a long while. We saw, I think, Dundee United doing it. I mean, Rangers are doing it to a certain extent as well. Um, you've got investors like that. You know, it's good to take the pressure off you because I think Alan will need some money uh, in the January window. I'm sure he would love to bring in a couple of players just to keep them away from that relegation zone. Yeah, I mean, it's fantastic news. Slightly tongue-in-cheek there on the basis that the, the Weirs are lottery winners. If they were investing in Celtic and Rangers, there would be a real hoo-ha right now, Murdo, <laughs> from fans saying, get your, get your hand in your pocket. Yeah. But Partick Thistle fans are a wee bit more laid back over the whole thing. Yeah, fantastic. Because <laughs> I think that they supported that you set up at Firhill. Yeah, so they can't, the, they do the academy. academy. So I think that's great, Alan. See, and that's great. Now that the club are debt-free and it'll help the Alan Archibald looking for players, that even if they're just bringing in a new player in January, you know, he just pays wage. Yeah. And I'm sure at some point they'll be helping towards paying players' wages and, and if the side can go on a good run then it's money really worth a good, a good spend on it. Yeah, and Billy Allen obviously part mm -hmm. of the three uh, can, people that are investing in Partick Thistle Ruffy so, you know, clearly these are lifelong Partick Thistle fans which is great as well uh, and it's good to know you've got that cushion not that they're going to be dipping their hand in regularly but just to take away the debt first and foremost is, is great news for the Jags fans. Yeah, that, that I don't think. Uh, I know the supporters realise, you know, the day-to-day -day running of a club. Uh, it takes a lot. I mean, if, you, if you're not getting the, the crowds that you need to pay the wages, say you obviously budget and say you need 4,000, there's not every game you're going to get 4,000 spectators in. So you're going to have a loss at some games. Yep. So it's good when you've got supporters of that who really appreciate how difficult it is to run a club. And uh, they're supporters, and they go along there. They want to see their team win, so they're just they're just helping out. Yeah, and I, I don't often change my mind mid-season, uh, Ruffy, but I, I might actually invoke the Alan Ruff clause here. Mm -hmm. I think I might change my mind on who's getting relegated. Well, it's amazing. No, it's two good results, and they were really desperate to get that Motherwell game on, particularly at home. You know, if they keep the run going, obviously it was it was postponed. But uh, now they'll be looking forward to Saturday. And you're right. You know, in this league, when you're down the bottom, if you get three points, it can take the pressure off you. Yeah, Murdo had uh, Paddy Thistle for the relegation spot and Hamilton Ackies for the playoff. <laughs> so, <laughs> so things are looking slightly shaky, <laughs> with my opinion on that. Who did you have at the start of the season? Uh, the start, I think. I'm sorry, I don't know who I picked at the, the start to, to go down because it was very competitive. Because the, 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 usually the side, a, a club like Hamilton, I think everybody's got to take their hat off to Hamilton because year in, year out, everybody's saying, oh, they're going to be struggling and they're going to be down the bottom half. They're still bringing through the young kids, still giving players a chance, still letting one or two go for decent money, and they're still sitting very comfortable on the table. And they're a good side to watch. You know, they play good football, so I, I think it's very difficult now. You're looking at Dundee United, they're getting pushed away at the bottom with, with Thistle going on with a couple of good results. Kilmarnock's picking up the odd uh, two or three points. So all of a sudden now, United are under so much pressure and it's going to be difficult for them because you can't just switch, pull, put down a switch, Peter, and say, start playing better. It's yeah. a new manager and it doesn't happen. You've got to work harder and harder to get yourself away from that position. Yeah, and of course, Motherwell, uh, Mark McGee's already <coughs> been over speaking to Les Hutchison about their plans uh, for the future as well, which, I mean, at that bottom end, uh, this could be critical. It may not be critical if we change the size of the league in the summer, Ruffy, but that's, <laughs> just, uh, that's just something that just... A 
to throw the spanner in the works there, uh, I wouldn't rule that out either. Um, Muddle your old side, um, and Ruffies, if I'm really stretching it, <laughs> are involved in European action on Thursday. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't like to see too many fans uh, go to it. You always get yeah. the absolute diehards that will travel and walk yeah. over broken glass, but in these troubled times, I think it might be a good idea just to, you know, watch it on the telly and see yeah. how Celtic do it in a meaningless game. Yeah, well, you know, when Celtic go, they don't play a meaningless game. Celtic are always involved. They've got always got to do well. They've got, got to play well. They've got to try and win the game, whether it is that they can qualify for anything. But I, I really feel for the fans going to this one because normally Celtic fans are great travellers. They go abroad. They just enjoy themselves. But going to Holland wasn't a great trip for them because of this, so many problems out there. But to be warned before you go over there, it's one I'm sure a lot of Celtic fans will not go just because of the warnings. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's harsh to say meaningless game, but that's mm. what it is, Rafi. I mean, Celtic obviously will want to try and avoid that record of not having won uh, a Europa League fixture uh, for a considerable time. It's not a good record uh, to have on the CV, but... Uh, you know, let's let's look at it. Let's see Celtic play at their absolute best and Fenerbahce play at their best. Who wins? I, I don't think that Celtic are far away from the teams in that group. I know that the results don't uh, back that up, but I certainly in, in every game that Celtic's played, if they defended properly, if yeah. they'd taken their chances, they would be in a better place. But I don't think they can afford to go there and take a heavy beating. Uh, I don't think Ronnie Delio wants that. I don't think he wants it on his CV. It would just kickstart everybody again. You know, it's went a wee bit quiet. Everybody's backed off a wee bit because they're playing well in the league. But another European defeat, and particularly a heavy one, would just yeah. start it up again. Even their home game against Fenerbahce, Celtic were fantastic. Two, uh, cruising at 2 nothing, and then a mistake at the back. Just Alan's touched on it. I think every game you could look back on from Celtic in this campaign and they made mistakes at the back. Yeah. And it's been crucial for them in all the time because they were comfortable at home. And the home record's usually been fantastic. Now they've not won any games in this section, yeah. which is really, really poor. But to be fair, Murdo, you could say that about any club. You know, when you talk about good teams and teams that are not as good are not good teams, you know, we, we could have won this division had we defended <laughs> better. <laughs> think, you know, Ruffy's yeah. Ruff, yeah. line doesn't yeah. wash with me. I think, we, yeah. You know, I think the I'm 20 minutes of a good spell and then the other, yeah. apart from that, the rest yeah. of the 70 minutes, they made a back end of it. Yeah. yeah, I think the bottom line is none of the teams in this group will do anything. I don't mm. think they're good sides. That's the yeah. that's the poor thing from Celtic's point of view. Well, the team that knocks Celtic out of the Champions League are not doing anything either. Well, they're going to yeah. be 5-0. And you know, got beat five 0 So, <laughs> so they but, but it tells tell Celtic where they are just now in European mm. football. Yeah. Because over the years, Peter, we've always been talking about the Champions League games and the big sides arriving at Celtic Park and going away with nothing. Man United's and Barcelona's. Now we're struggling. We can't even boast about beating teams in the Europa League. Yeah. And that, that's a problem. And that's where Celtic's got to get it right. Come January, start building for next season and get quality players into the club. But the thing about it, as you've just said there, the now. It's important to try and get something out of Thursday's game because all these results will carry on to next year. Because as soon as the first European game they get, all these stats are going to be brought up again. Yeah. yeah. You know, so really, if they try and get something, a win or something, that would sort of a kickstart next year a lot easier. Yeah, just before we talk about the uh, Champions League, you two again have got something in common. You both played for Hibernian, uh, although only one of you won silverware when you were there. Um, <laughs> as per the terms of Murdo's contract, I had to mention, <laughs> to mention that. <laughs> what about him, your old side, Murdo? Yeah. Because, you know, we've thoroughly enjoyed watching them, and, and Alan Stubbs picked up the manager of the month and said, yeah. you know, we've got Rangers spooked because were on their tail. Well, that's the thing. They, they, they did spook them. You know, he came away with one or two wee statements and I think it kind of rubbed Rangers up the wrong way. Yeah. But again, Rangers are a massive football club and they're going in the right direction as well. So it's going to be a tough challenge for both of them. Yeah. You no, know, it's because uh, both Rangers will go on a run again. Yeah. And then, no, because I, I watched them last week and they were comfortable against St Mirren and football was good. They went a wee bit flat for 10 minutes and then they lifted their game. They've got goal scorers. But you go to Edinburgh, go to Hibs, and Hibs are a really strong side. Good experience across the middle of the park, really strong in the middle of the park. Sc goal scorers up, up front as well. So, yeah. boy, it's going to be a great battle this year. Just to briefly, Stuart McCall says it will come down to the games against uh, each other, Rangers and Hibs. Do you believe that? It'll not, it'll not be far away from that because I think Hibs and Rangers, not many teams will beat them home or away. 
because I think the quality is there in both the, both the clubs. Yeah, Ruffy. Um. Yeah, I would agree with that. I've said it all along. I, I don't think Rangers will lose at home in the league. I think they're far too strong for all the other sides. It'll be away from home in a Drake night in January or February when the wind's howling, and uh, that that'll be when they'll maybe drop points. Okay, uh, I don't know about you two guys, but I'm enjoying the ding dong battle between the two managers. Yeah. It's fantastic in the yeah. championship. Just briefly, uh, you think things are bad here? English clubs could actually lose a place in the Champions League uh, if they don't do well in this season's competition. Uh, how do you see it going for Wolfsburg, Man United, Murdo? Man United have to win yeah. and hope that uh, you know PSV don't better. You know their their uh, scoreline. I think Man United are really struggling to get through. I think that the German side they're, they're well organised. They're one of the top German sides just now. You know they've, they've been there in merit, and I think Man United will struggle. Okay, draw. No, I don't think they'll. I think Wolfsburg will beat them. I think they'll get a draw. Uh, Manchester City, Munchen, Gladbach. Man City are through. Does it really matter? Yeah. Well, I mentioned Gladbach got a good result on the weekend there yeah. yeah. against yeah, Bayern, Bayern, so wow. it's a very good game. <laughs> Ruffy's, Ruffy's research mentioned Gladbach <laughs> on that bombshell. Yeah, We're out of here. Goodbye. <laughs>